Hello, um, my name is Christoph Fichmann, and in this video, I would like to explain how to integrate an API design studio like Stoplight with the XB API management solution. Um, to give you a, a bit of context, uh, what's, what you will see in this video is um, how you can say you have your API design tool, which creates some kind of an open API as regular definition. And um, you, as an API producer, as an API designer, uh, would like to push that API into the API management solution. And um, you would like to do that maybe, let's say, on a repeatable process um, to, to design or to test your API design or do change to your API design. And when you are ready, you would like to put that API design in version control. And for that, I'm using Stoplight. And um, this is the actual um, yeah, Windows client-based installation. Um, you have also the possibility to use um, a web-based application. That um, Stoplight Studio now allows me to create a local project, and which is just on my hard disk, or you have a shared project on a Git location, like on GitHub or like, like on Bitbucket. And I have already created a project and checked out before from GitHub in my personal account. And I can now check out that project. And what is inside that project mainly is, of course, um, an application maybe like an API builder, a Node.js application. So that means the API um, definition or the API itself can go along with the application code. Then we have the API definition and um, Stoplight helps me to filter out what is an API, what is relevant for an API, like models, like the API definition itself. And um, if I go back to files, then I can see the whole content. And with that um, API, of course, I have the API management or API design capabilities you can expect from, an, from a sophisticated um, API design studio. So that means I do not need to know how Swagger works. I can go and change this one here on a on a on a yeah on a web-based application or not web-based, but on this uh, let's say application where you put your your pass in, where you say I would like to have a post call or post method additionally, that kind of stuff. And of course, you have then the possibility to say I would like to have a new pass or whatsoever. Um, and in the background. Um, Stoplight is producing the Open API um, definition. Stoplight is supporting Open API 3.0 and 2.0, of course. And um, then there is uh, a preview pane which gives you an overview um, about the API itself. And there is a mock server included which you then can use directly from the Stoplight editor to test out your API. Uh, <clears throat> so now let's say the next step is to push that API into the API management system. And maybe it makes no sense from the beginning to say, every time you do a, a tiny change, uh, create a commit and wait for the pipeline to be completed. Maybe it makes more sense just to say, um, take what we have right now, my work in progress. And this is what I would like to see in the API management solution. And for that, I'm going to, to say, I would like to import um, my API. By the way, this is um, the checked out project folder from Stoplight where my actual workspace is. And here you see that API definition, API config folder. And within that folder, I have that, um, that API definition. What is this API definition? It, it contains the information how that API should appear on the XB API management system what name you would like to have, um, what state it should have, that version, et cetera, IPP. This is the desired state. And this is based on, on a command line interface, which is Swagger Promote. And I would like to use now Swagger Promote by saying API import. And um, when executing that, you see um, this is a Swagger Promote. And it tells me that I have to tell Swagger promote the configuration file. And the configuration file is very simple. This is the weather file. Then the next thing is I would like to tell into which stage. I don't go into details what the stage is. It's some kind of a shortcut containing all the necessary information to know where to talk to. And actually, that API configuration file, this one here, 
is pointing to the API definition, which is really checked in in version control. So that means this is not my work in progress um, version I would like to push for a second. That's why I say that the actual API config I would like to see is this weather, um, no, not, not that weather. Um, the API definition should be my image and weather API. Um, so, and now with that command, I say, please take that work in progress version and um, bring it into the API management system. So, and now I can go back into the API portal, uh, yeah, into, into the API portal, and you see this is the XB image and weather API. It has the description I have given. I can go into that API now and see there's one endpoint, there's this description as expected. And now let's say I'm continuing my work. I am opening that API definition again, and I say there should be a new path. And this is, let's say, hello world. Um, I don't want to focus on how API design works. I would like to focus on the process for the designer. And um, let's say on form. And additionally, I would like to have a post operation doing something. And maybe I would like to add a new text here at, at the bottom or at the top and say, hello world. And let's say now again, a new API, let's say state, and I would like to test that and I can go, or maybe not only changing the API design, um, I mean that file here, maybe I would like also to change the configuration of my API a bit and say that the image the one which is actually in place I don't like. Let's say I would like to use the weather logo, which is available here as well. And I can do that now by saying weather logo dot JPEG, save that. And maybe the title should be weather API and not API state like so. Um, yeah, that's all. Of course, we are configuring API security a little bit. Um, and we replicate the same work in progress state. And then we are going back to the API portal and have a look how the API now looks like. We have a new icon for the weather API. We see that hello world. And we have two new endpoints as expected. Okay, um, now I would like to say this is, let's say, some kind of a useful state to, to where it makes sense to commit it into version control. And um, let's say this is coming now from Git. That's why I'm changing the name of my API again to, to have, let's say, some kind of a change. And also for the API definition again, and say there's a new path. And this is from Git. And this is from Git and should provide a trace. Why not? And now I'm committing that. And goes back, of course, into my version control system where I have checked out that project before. And actually I'm working on a branch. So that means this is also possible to, to test your API on branches. And based on that branch, um, you, you can then later on make pull requests and that kind of stuff to merge changes you have done to an API back in, into the main stage, into the main API. Um, <clears throat> There are a few more things what hap what's happening now, and I would like to explain that. Um, to, to, to support that Git flow um, or that, that pipeline-based approach, which is going via Jenkins, I have to tell Jenkins what should going what, sh what Jenkins should do with that um, API or with that project. And that's why I have here a Jenkins file created. And that Jenkins file is a very, very simple pipeline because it has only one step. Of course, it checks out the project out of Git. Out of Git, this is the Git repository. And then it calls Maven um, to, to replicate my API into the API management system. And this is where you c configure actually how Maven should be executed in that POM file. And I'm saying that the API configuration file which should be used is the one which is here which is then, by the way, pointing to the checked in code. So that means this is my API definition, API config, and then I made a mistake here, like the weather API JSON. And the stage, it should be 
deployed is the API environment. And here, for instance, you can have any other stage you have available, like your personal API manager installation, which you are using when you are working on a branch or something like that. And this is basically at the end used by this plugin, which is at the moment just calling a Java program. And this Java program is that command line interface you have seen before. And we are giving to that Java program the config file from the top top end, we are giving it a stage. So that means the actual API config. So this is the code or this is the API um, from Git and push that changes. And actually my flow doesn't start automatically because um, my um, Jenkins, which I have here is not configured to, to listen on, on changes on Git because there is no webhook configured. That's why I have to start that manually. Um, just, just a few words. My administrator has configured um, before a so-called organization folder in uh, Jenkins, which then is scanning for the projects which I'm creating so that uh, my administrator doesn't need to work for me and create new Git flows all the time. They are appearing here automatically. I have actually two API projects in my um, Git repository, yeah, in my, let's say, Git, Git space, if you want so. And I can go now into that Imagine API demo. And you see that are, these are the branches that are, that are actually um, supported. And I can now say, and this is what I have to do now by hand, please build that real world use case now. And go into the console. And now you see it, the same happened as on the command line. It's calling that API command line tool. It's replicating the API. And the difference is, of course, that the API definition is now coming from that um, mass, from that repository. Um, yeah, okay, there, there is a small mistake that it is taking the information from master and not from the branch. Um, but anyway, um, this is not so super important now because this is something which it's very likely um, you can fix that. But the, but this is, let's say, the point how that API can now be replicated via a pipeline into the API management system. So now the point is that we will not see the um, we will not see the API definition in a way we have just designed it here because we are now have used the API definition from the master branch. So that means I go to the portal, I go to the API, and now we are back, let's say, at the initial state, um, which is on master having only, um, let's say, the data endpoint. Okay, um, that's basically all I wanted to show. Um, if you would like to understand more about Stoplight and what kind of possibilities you have in Stoplight and how everything, sorry, everything works, um, there are other videos around um, how that API design works. For me, it was more important to illustrate how the workflow between the API management system and an API design tool works. You have seen how you can use the command line interface and repeat that step. And when you check that in, into a version control system, a pipeline picks it up. In my case, unfortunately, um, the branch was not working. It has picked it up from the master branch. But um, as I said, this is a configuration issue. And then it goes into the pipeline. And from there, you can then promote that API into um, higher stages. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful and um, have a good day.